Okay, so we're going to look at some uh, elimination problems where it's not as easy as just adding or subtracting the equations. We're going to have to multiply for us to cancel something out. So here we have 3x plus 4y equals 6 and 5x plus 2y equals negative 4. Looking at the coefficients for the x, we have 3x and a 5x. And we, for the y's, we have a 4y and a 2y. So in this case, it's going to be easy for us to eliminate my y's by trying to get that second equation to have a negative 4y. So we have to try to figure out, okay, so how can I get a negative 4y? Well, I'd have to multiply that entire bottom equation by negative 2. So I'm going to rewrite my top equation just to the side for me to solve. And then now I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So this becomes a negative 10x, then a negative 4y, and that equals a positive 8. So now I'm just going to add up these equations like I have before. And this becomes a negative 7x. And now my y's are going to cancel out completely. And that will equal a positive 14. Dividing both sides by negative 7 gives me that x equals negative 2. So I have negative 2 comma some other y value. From here, I'm going to plug that point or that value for x in for one of my equations. I'm going to use the top one, which gives me 3 times negative 2 plus 4y equals 6. That gives me negative 6 plus 4y equals a positive 6. Adding 6 to both sides gives me 4y equals 12. Therefore, y equals 3. So I believe the solution, the intersection point, is going to be negative 2 comma 3. But again, we always want to check to see if that works out. So I'm going to plug that into my bottom equation just to see. So 5 times negative 2 plus 2 times 3. Well, that's negative 10 plus 6, which is negative 4. So that works. Our solution, our intersection point, is negative 2 comma 3. So right now I want you to pause the video, try this one out, uh, and come back when you're done. Okay, so you should have gotten an answer of 3 comma negative 4. If you didn't get that, um, stick around. If you did, move on. So here I'm going to actually try to eliminate my x's because I have that nice pair of 2 and 6. It's very easy for me to get um, rid of my x's in that way. 5 and 3, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to multiply that entire equation by negative 3 which gives me a negative 6x minus 15y equals a positive 42. Again, I'm just going to add like normal. My x's completely cancel out. I'm left with a negative 12y, and that will equal a positive 48. Dividing both sides by negative 12 gives me a y value that is equal to negative 4. So that gives me right here. From there, I'm going to uh, just plug that in. I'm going to plug it into the bottom equation this time. So that is 6x plus 3 times negative 4 equals 6. So 6x minus 12 equals 6. Add 12 to both sides and you get 6x equals 18 or x equals 3. But again, we always want to double check. So I'm going to plug that into my top one. And say is 2 times 3 plus 5 times negative 4 equal to negative 14. Let's say positive 6 minus 20 and that is negative 14. So we're good to go. Our answer is 3 comma negative 14. Or sorry, 3 comma negative 4. All right. So this problem's a little bit more difficult because 3 doesn't go nicely into 4 and 2 doesn't go nicely into 3, right? Our coefficients don't work very nicely together. So instead what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pick a variable we want to eliminate. In this case, I'm going to try to get rid of x. So what I have to decide is what number do both 3 and 4 quickly and easily go into, right? 
So what that means is I need to get 3 and 4 going into a number, which is 12. So I'm going to multiply my entire top equation by positive 4. That way I get a positive 12x. And then I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by negative 3. That way I get a negative 12x. And that negative can either go on the top or bottom. Uh, it doesn't really matter um, as long as you're, one of them's positive and one of them's negative. So this gives me a 12x plus 8y equals 8. And then a negative 12x minus 9y equals negative 3. From there, I'm going to add, and my x's completely cancel out. I'm left with a negative y equals 5, which means I'm able to just divide by that negative 1 to get y equals negative 5. So I have negative 5 for my y value. So from here, what we're going to do is plug that in. Uh, I'm going to use the bottom one, 4x plus 3 times negative 5 equals 1, or 4x minus 15 equals 1, which means that oops, 4x equals 16, and dividing by 4 gives me x equals 4. And if I plug that into the top one, I have 3 times 4 plus 2 times negative 5, which is 12 minus 10, and that's 2. So we're good to go. Our solution is 4 comma negative 5. And again, I could have done the exact same thing um, solving for y, but I chose to solve for x here. All right, so in this case, we're given a little bit of a gift in the fact that we have a positive and a negative value for our y's. So I'm going to use, I'm going to eliminate my y's here because anytime I don't have to multiply by a negative, it's going to be a little bit better. That's ten, that tends to be where we make our mistakes. So I'm going to multiply our top equation by 5 and our bottom equation by 3. So this gives me a 10x minus 15y equals a negative 70. On the bottom, I have a 21x plus 15y equals a negative, I believe that's 54. So we're going to add these up, and that gives me 31x. The y's cancel out, and 70 plus 54 gives me a 124. Negative, of course. I'm able to divide both sides by 31 to get x equals negative 4. So that's my x coordinate here. We're going to have a negative 4. I'm going to plug that into the top equation um, just because, right? It doesn't really matter. 2 times negative 4 minus 3y equals 14. Maybe if you're someone who uh, struggles with negatives a little bit, try to use that second equation because then you're not dividing by a negative at the end. Always might be helpful. So I now I'm going to add 8 to both sides to get 3y equals negative 6. And then I lastly divide by negative 3 to get y equals 2. So I have the point. 4, negative 4 comma 2. I'm going to try that with my bottom equation again, just to double check, which gives me a negative 28 plus 10, and that equals negative 18. So we are good to go. Our solution, our intersection point is negative 4 comma 2. And again, we can still have infinite or no solutions. I'm not covering that in this video, but you would get the same kind of thing where you'd get a number equals a different number. Or in this case, when you did elimination, you'd get 0 equals some other number, meaning that our x and y values would both go away. Um, so that's how we'd know. And if it got 0 equals 0, infinite. 0 equals another number, 
uh, we'd have no solutions. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, of course, you know the drill, pause the video here and solve. I know the variables are a little bit different here, not your normal X and Y, but it's the exact same process. Consider G as X and M as Y. Go ahead and solve. Okay, so you should have gotten the, oh, you should have got, you should have gotten negative one comma seven as a solution. If you did, great, you're done, move on. If not, stick around and watch me explain it. So I'm going to try to solve for, I'm going to try to eliminate my G's here because again, I have that positive and negative G. So I'm going to multiply my top equation by a positive two, my bottom equation by that positive three. And this gives me a 6G plus an 8M equals 50. And that bottom one would be a negative 6G plus 15M. And that equals, I think, 101. I mean, you have a calculator, you can, oh, 111. There we go. Uh, so now I'm going to combine these to get 23m equals 161. And 161 divided by 23 gives me that m is equal to 7. And of course, I plug that in. I need to solve for my g. So we're going to use the top equation of 3g plus 4 times 7 equals 25 and I get 3g plus 28 equals 25 so I subtract 28 from both sides giving me 3g equals negative 3 lastly dividing by 3 gives me g equals negative 1 so I have g equaling negative 1 and we need to plug that in and again notice that I did the exact same thing here Right, even though I use x and or g and m, I'm still treating them pretty much as just x and y. So negative two times negative one plus five times seven. Well, that's two plus thirty-five, and that's thirty-seven. So we're good to go. Our solution is negative one, comma seven. All right, thank you for watching and taking the notes. Have a great day.